If you want to fly between Chicago and Albany, New York, there are three options for nonstop travel. Southwest offers multiple nonstop flights from Midway Airport, while American and United both offer nonstop services from O'Hare. Knowing this, you might be a bit confused upon seeing this boarding pass. Southwest doesn't fly nonstop from O'Hare to Albany, so why does my boarding pass look like this? Well, today we're going to experience one of the most unique aspects of Southwest Airlines, the no plane change. Our routing takes us first from Chicago O'Hare to Baltimore. However, instead of getting off and changing planes in Baltimore, the same flight number and aircraft will take us onwards to Albany. It's going to be quite an interesting journey and I'm very excited to share it with you all today. Our trip got off to a slightly rough start. The economy parking lots at O'Hare were completely full, but thankfully, the staff were handing out vouchers for people to park at the main parking garages by the terminals. Normally, it's about two to three times more expensive to park here, but because of the vouchers, we were able to pay the cheaper economy rate. The main garages are adjacent to terminals one, two, and three, but because we're flying southwest, we took the airport transit system across to terminal five. Now, it's worth noting that Terminal 5 is getting its own parking garage, which is expected to be completed sometime in 2024. That will surely make things much easier for both domestic and international passengers flying from Terminal 5. As is usual when flying Southwest, check-in was completed online, so it was straight to TSA pre-check when we arrived at the terminal. Myself and most of my family cleared the checkpoint within 10 minutes. However, my sister's bag got pulled aside for a more thorough search. I guess it just runs in the family. I last covered the Terminal 5 renovations a few months back, and since then, the terminal has improved even more. If you remember when I flew southwest back in June, gates M18 through M24 were closed off for renovation. Now, all of these gates are fully renovated with new seats, carpeting, and ceiling panels. Even better yet, the hallway to the Terminal 5 expansion is more open now, with less construction scaffolding choking the hallway. New bathrooms have been added, and as we walk further, we see that gate M26 is officially open for use as well. Overall, the rest of the expansion is just as you've seen it in previous videos. It's still quite a long walk, and this was noted by my family members as well. Unfortunately, all Southwest flights depart from this end of the terminal, so again, if you are flying Southwest from O'Hare, be sure to account for the 10 to 15 minutes that it takes just to reach your gate. This afternoon, we're on board Southwest 2986 to Baltimore, departing from gate M35. Now, even though this flight continues to Albany, it's not listed on the board since Albany isn't an official Southwest destination from O'Hare. I also just realized that even though Alitalia no longer exists and has been taken over by ITA Airways, their logo still shows up as a Delta Airlines code share. <laughs> Boarding started on time and today I was holding position A45. This flight to Baltimore was only 65% full with 113 passengers on board. Most would be deplaning in Baltimore, with just seven of us remaining on board all the way through to Albany. Southwest 737 MAX 8 has a mostly identical layout to the 737-800. It features 175 seats in a one-class configuration. These newer Southwest seats are quite nice with adjustable headrests and good padding. I didn't have any issues with them. The seat back is quite standard with the literature pocket at the top, tray table, seat pocket with some trash left over from the previous flight, and rather generous legroom. Located above the seat are your reading lights, air vents, and call buttons. Now, because the flight was only 65% full, most passengers got either a window or aisle seat. The middle seats were mostly left empty, which is always nice. Also, Southwest is currently in the process of adding in-seat power to their planes. This being one of the older MAX aircraft, it hasn't received that retrofit just yet. 
Looking out the window, I was happy to see United 757-200 in the Her Art Here California livery docked at M32. This aircraft had just arrived from Reykjavik, Iceland. And just next to us was the glorious Lufthansa 747-8, which had come in from Frankfurt. As we approached cruising altitude, I opened up the tray table in anticipation of the in-flight service. My table was a bit stained, but nothing too serious. As expected, Wi-Fi was available on this flight, through which you could stream all sorts of entertainment, purchase internet access, and view other helpful resources. The site also lists connecting flight information, so just for fun, I went to check my onward flight to Albany, even though it would be on this exact same plane. The Wi-Fi site also has a map feature, although it seems that some flights have a 3D interactive map and others, like this one, have a basic 2D map. 
The service on today's flight consisted of snack mix packets being passed out and drink orders being served afterward. I went for water as usual today. This flight went by quickly and peacefully, with it soon being time for descent into Baltimore. After approaching from the west, we turned 90 degrees to the right for our downwind leg bringing us right past downtown. We then turned 90 degrees to the left for our final approach onto runway 10. So as you heard, because we're continuing on to Albany, we get to stay on board the aircraft. Once everyone else had deplaned and everyone continuing to New York was accounted for, we were then allowed to get up and move around. During layovers like this, passengers are allowed to change seats, and so I moved back three rows to seat 8F. It's been a while since I've been able to stay on board an aircraft during its layover, my last time being in 2010 on board PIA. Either way, it was such a unique and cool experience to have virtually the entire aircraft to ourselves for this quick hour-long layover. Because the plane was empty, it made logical sense to go check out one of the two lavatories. I went to the one in the back, and being a 737 MAX, of course, these bathrooms are quite tiny with the sinks being an absolute joke. But soon, the onward leg to Albany began boarding, and so it was time to get seated in preparation for departure. Unlike the flight in from Chicago, which was relatively empty, this onward flight to Albany was pretty much completely full.
Baltimore to Albany is a pretty quick flight, but that doesn't mean there's not much to see. Thankfully, the weather was beautiful the entire day, and this meant that we got some incredible views, especially as we passed over New York City. Despite the quick flight, the crew still managed to serve refreshments. It was the same snack mix, and for my drink this time, I went with apple juice. And that was literally it. As soon as the snack service wrapped up, we were already beginning our descent into Albany. Sitting on the right side of the aircraft really paid off for this flight. You saw those amazing views of New York City, but now you'll get to see some beautiful views of downtown Albany during golden hour, as we come in for landing on runway one. So despite not flying nonstop between Chicago and Albany, it was such a fun and unique experience to take this route on Southwest. The service and experience across both flights were great. The only complaints I had were the aircraft not being cleaned particularly well before we boarded in Chicago. It's worth noting that Southwest schedule changes a lot more frequently than most other airlines. So with that being said, this direct flight from O'Hare to Albany via Baltimore no longer operates. Granted, Southwest continues to serve Baltimore nonstop from O'Hare, but the onward leg to Albany no longer exists from O'Hare. Ironically enough, at the time this flight 2986 was operating, its routing was from Chicago O'Hare to Baltimore to Albany and then back to Chicago, but this time to Midway Airport. Thanks so much for watching this rather fun flight experience. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to leave a like and comment if you've ever experienced the Southwest no plane change. Be sure to subscribe for more videos rolling out soon, but until next time, take care and I'll see you next time.